Hey, we are back on PA Harness Week. And by the way, speaking of PA Harness Week, we have a website. It is like dynamite, man. Let's get you. And all you have to do is put in your search browser there is harnessweek.com. You can leave the paw off and it'll take you to us. And there's all kinds of neat stuff. You can win prizes and you can make comments. And we'd like to keep in touch with you folks that are watching every week. Uh, Rob Kennedy, a terrific guy, wrote about his experience in a couple of places where I used to work. Uh, Liberty Bell Park and Free State Raceway, uh, both have since closed. I put them out of business in a hurry. So <laughs> if you would like to stay in contact with us, we'd love to hear from you. Yes, we love fan mail, absolutely. But one of the things that um, you didn't mention is the video. You can watch the oh, yeah. shows over and over and over on HarnessWeek.com. Yes, yeah, so if you miss it 1 o'clock on a Saturday here at Comcast Sportsnet, you can watch it anytime at HarnessWeek.com. Good stuff. And also Fred, who sent a very complimentary email. Your email address was wrong. Thank you for the kind words. And give us the right address. We want to say thank you, okay? All right, now, let's go back to the action. Pocono's 10th race on Tuesday. It was Philly Mayor's Open, and with that, here's Heather. Yeah, we got the girl power race here, and it's a $30,000 purse. The better's choice is not enough, and she's the better's choice for good reason. She's made over $110,000, and she's gone in 115.4 already this year. Now, she's the one to nine shot. The closest to her a couple seven to one shots will not enough have enough. Let's see. Here comes Ridge Jumper on the outside after not enough. The quarter 27 even. They keep shuffling the deck up here. Ridge Jumper won in this class last time at Pocono. Had the pocket trip in this one, but Brandon Simpson wants to control matters with her tonight. Pocket trip now for not enough. She's the one to nine favorite. The million dollar mare has won three of five this year. Me, me, me off back to back wins at Yonkers has settled third. In behind that, McFlurdy. Billy Blue Chip is the trailer. They're in line one behind the other field of five to the half in 56 even 29 even second panel it's ridge jumper still out in front as they straighten out on the back stretch simpson calmly in the bike they're not asking for anything just yet not enough also content to sit in the pocket for the moment me 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 inside third used early on we'll see when the stall bomb goes to her again inside fourth there mcflirty and at the back billy blue chip nobody venturing out there on the back stretch now not enough pulls the pocket and goes after Ridge Jumper three quarters 125 and two very soft third panel of 29 and two on the outside not enough taking on Ridge Jumper shoulder to shoulder toe to toe way back there moving up third McFlurdy as Mimi Me drops back top of the stretch Ridge Jumper still with something left not enough trying to wear her down on the outside it's Ridge Jumper and not enough no quarter ass none given here it's tight it's not enough Bridge Jumper gave not enough a run for her money, but the grin from ear to ear mare had enough to nab her rival at the wire, um, and she wins as the overwhelming favorite in 152 and 2, and the crowd goes wild. Woo! The one to nine shot wins. She was driven by Erica Dell for trainer Chris Oaks. Ridge Jumper was a very, very close second. And and me, me, me was third. Saturday's 10th at Mohegan Sun of Pocono Downs. It was an open handicap pace. And Golden Receiver, who toyed with the open field the week before, was three to five with Ron Pierce. Whiskey Pete, who won the Harris Chester Open the week before, journeyed up north and was five to two with Pat Burry. And drop red with John Campbell it was the seven to one third betting choice. And with the call, here's Jim. I can feel you, but feel you. Up front here, a challenge now for presidential order. The quarter, a crisp 26 even. Presidential order as consistent as they come. Facing him down, golden receiver. Winner in this class last time out. Takes over the lead as a 3-5 to five favorite with Ronnie Pierce. Presidential order back to second. Whiskey Pete, a winner at Chester last time in the opens, goes first over. Picking up that cover is Drop Red. And in between horses, their last conquest, they're all kinds of bunched up. Drop Red got forced outside. Get it now, Moves into six at the back. Mr. Right now in St. William. The half 54 and four. 28 and four. Second panel. Predictably rapid pace up here on the outside now. Whiskey Pete taking it to Golden Receiver. Trying to clear here for Barry. Golden Receiver loath to give up that lead, but Whiskey Pete finally clears. First over now. Third there is last conquest. Boxed in presidential order. Drop red is second over fifth. Further back. Get it now and Mr. Right now. Three quarters. 122 even. 
27 and 1 there, the third panel. Whiskey Pete, Barry going to the whip now. He's clear by a length and a half, but Golden Receiver, bloody but unbowed right there in the pocket. Third is Presidential Order on the inside looking for room. Top of the stretch, Whiskey Pete is now clear by three. Whiskey Pete goes up north, blows their doors off, wins the race, knocks up the three to five shot who came in second. So it was Whiskey Pete and Golden Retriever, a fairly easy exact, but it was a, a big mile. And Whiskey Pete right now is just as good as he could possibly be. All right, we're going to come back now to Harris Chester. I'm going to caught, catch up with driver Pat Burry. And here is interesting thoughts about the Midwesterner who has come east and is doing a heck of a job here. Pat Berry, not a household word around these parts, but I expect it will be any time now for somebody who's won 2,700 plus races and nearly $25 million in purses. Hi, Pat. Hi, how are you? Uh, I hope so, just as long as I keep getting some drives around here. You're a Midwest guy. You're from Chicago. That's where you began your career, I believe, in 94. But you've had a couple of sojourns where you came east. Tell us about those. Uh, it was certain horses I could drive for, certain stables. Uh, when back home in Chicago, we'd go on strike or some in the winter, so some of the stables we drove for, we would come out here, like uh, Tony Morganton, Teacher, Andy Miller. You know, we had to do a little traveling in the winters when we were on strike. And how do you find the racing on the East Coast compared to the Midwest? Um, the, both places were real tough because, uh, like I said, you know, the Andy and Julie Miller stables have moved out here. You had some other trainers all from home. We had tough racing at home also. It's just uh, a lot more traveling here. you got cover three, four, five tracks, sometimes in the same day, but definitely all week. Let me ask you the, the most important question. I understand your favorite TV show is Two and a Half Men. How do you feel about the whole Charlie Sheen thing now? Uh, I don't know. I guess, uh, I, I don't know. He's, he's a little different. <laughs> Pat, continued success, and uh, you're a great addition to this colony here on the East. I hope so. Thank you. All righty. Thank you, Pat. Very interesting interview. Now we go to uh, Harris Chester. It was the second race on Sunday, and with that, here's Heather. Okay, and here we've got Fleets of Magic with Ron Pierce, June's Sunny Boy with Corey Callahan, and Stand Up and Kiss Me with Tim Teacher. All familiar names to Harris Chester and the Winter Circle. But here comes driver Kim Vincent. Oh, no, he did not. Just a whoop up on all the Famer and two younglings to land Ebony Chapel in the Winter Circle with a 28 to 1 shot in 152 and 4. Oh, just to clarify, I know what I'm talking about with the gender. Kim is a dude, okay? A lot of people might think that Kim is a girl's name, but actually his formal name is Kimothy Vincent. So there you have it. Kimothy. Okay, now for Sunday's 10th at Harris Chester, for non-winners of 19,000 in the last five starts, this was essentially a match race between European Union, who went off a 3-5 to five with Brian Sears, and Southwestern Dream, the 3-1 to one second choice with Andy Miller. Andy Rue, it's true, it's true, was 9 to 2 with Timmy Tietrich. And at the end, that's exactly what happened. European Union over Southwestern Dream, and Andy Rue was third. Okay, we've got to take a break, but first, I've got to share something with you. I sneak into Mar Bodrod's house. Who's Mar Bodrod? He's the publicity guy at Dover Downs. Also, was the publicity guy at the now shuttered Brandywine Raceway. So I go in the back, in, like in the vault, all the way in the back. It was dark and it was dank, and I found some stuff you would not believe. It involved the great Mac Lobel. And we're going to show it to you when we come back. Reason to stay with our blast from the past. It's next. Go oh boy. Here is a brilliant trotter and a brilliant performance. Hi, they call me Big Seamus. Everybody knows I only like to play my lucky numbers. So when I go to the Downs Off Track wagering, I get to bet exactly that with the Exacta. A $2 bet on the Exacta delivers big payouts like this. When it's my night out, I eat big, play big, and I win big. Downs Off Track wagering, Allentown, East Stroudsburg, Carbondale, Hazleton. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. <laughs> 